The movie opens up with a 10-year-old boy named Peter Decker, who has just left his old 5th grader school and is now a fresher at a new school. Peter enters 6th grade with his close friends, Billy and Steve. On the way to their class, the seniors bully them, and they discuss how they used to be the big shots in middle school, but now that they're in 6th grade, the youngest at their school, no one takes them seriously. At the same time, Steve points out his sister and is worried about her bullying him all the time, and Billy mentions that he's growing and will have a mustache soon. Sad, Peter also shares that he won't have his own room anymore because his grandpa is moving in with him soon. Hearing this, his friends ask him the reason for his grandpa coming to live with them, and Peter begins to tell a story where his grandpa robbed a store. The scene then shifts to the past, when an elderly man named Ed Marino is shopping at a supermarket. He finds the newly renovated place strange and behaves rudely with the new store manager. Ed searches for the cashier counter, and when he sees none, he accidentally takes some groceries without paying at the self-checkout machine. Because of this, as soon as he walks out of the store, the security machine beeps, and the store manager follows him, asking him to stop. A commotion follows when the manager confronts him outside, and the elderly man Ed believes he's under attack. In his attempt to defend himself, he loses his balance, falls to the ground, and twists his ankle. People around think that the manager attacked the veteran Ed and start throwing trash at him. Following this event, Ed, who is recently widowed, is visited by his daughter Sally Marino Decker at his house. She's worried about Ed's habit of frequently getting into trouble, so she persuades Ed to move in with her family, even though he's reluctant to leave the house he built himself. Sally tells her father that they can miss her late mother together. Here, we learn that Sally is Peter's mother, and she's planning to give her son's bedroom to Ed. Back to the present, while Sally and her husband Arthur are shifting Peter's belongings to his new room in the attic, Peter gets upset about moving into the storage room, and he throws a fit. His mother advises him to behave and not pick fights with his grandpa. She explains that his sisters are sharing a room as well, so he shouldn't make a big deal out of it. His sisters then tease him about losing his room, which further annoys Peter. In the next scene, Ed arrives at Sally's house with his belongings, and everyone is happy to see their grandfather, especially the granddaughters. However, Peter doesn't seem too thrilled about having him, as he's gonna lose his room. He does not want Ed to live with them permanently. At the door, the little baby sister Jennifer excitedly goes to Ed and hugs him. All the family comes to greet the grandfather, except for Peter. Later, Peter greets Ed while he's alone in the room and leaves a hint that stealing another's room is not cool. The next day, Peter goes to school and tells his friends about the whole situation he's facing at his home. After hearing him out, his friends suggest he fight for what belongs to him and go on a war with his grandpa. Hoping to play with the grandpa, Jennifer approaches Ed, but the latter is sitting near the window, grieving his wife's passing. Jennifer proposes to play games and watch a movie together, but Grandpa is too sad to engage with her. He sits by the window, looking outside and lost in memories of his wife. Heartbroken, Jennifer goes to her mother and refers to Grandpa as dull and boring, as he just sits in one place and doesn't want to play or move around at all. Meanwhile, Peter has started living in the storage room in the attic, and his life is made difficult by a bat and a rat that has invaded the space. While trying to avoid them, he bumps into a wooden wall and falls to the floor. To make matters worse, there's a leak in the roof right above his bed, so he can't even get a good night's sleep. Annoyed and fed up with everything, he then remembers his friend's suggestion and decides to fight for his rights. After this, he walks to Ed's door and slides a note into his grandpa's room. Ed notices it and picks it up to read. In the note, Peter calls himself the Secret Warrior and warns his grandpa, stating that if his room isn't given back to him, he'll declare war. However, Ed doesn't take the note seriously, thinking it's just a prank by some kid. The following day, Peter confides in his friends and expresses frustration that his grandpa didn't even acknowledge the note. He mentions that he has no idea if he even read it or forgot about it. Peter's friends agree with him, suggesting that his grandpa should at least respond. One day, as Peter and his friends are walking in the hallway, an older student starts picking on Peter, pushing him around and tossing his bag away into the trash can. 
Our boy is now extremely frustrated because he already has no peace at home, and he's also being bullied at school. On the other hand, to keep her father engaged, Sally takes Ed to hang out with his good old friend Jerry. Before she drops him at his friend's house, she also gives him a mobile phone and teaches him how to use the Lyft app while returning home. Soon, Ed enters Jerry's house and finds that he lives alone and is well-versed in modern gadgets, with his house filled with them. As they spend time together, Ed and Jerry are later joined by another friend, Danny. This new friend has some exciting news to share. He has a chance to go on a date with his favorite masseuse if he can manage to walk 1,000 steps during the week. Following this, they all decide to take a walk in the nearby park. During this time, Ed shows them the note he received from Peter, but he doesn't take it too seriously. Ed is still under the impression that Peter won't act on his threats. However, his friends suggest he react and retaliate to the threats. The scene then shifts to the middle of the night when Ed is in deep sleep. On the other hand, Peter is peeping at him from the attic and comes up with a plan. He attaches his music player to a remote control car and drives it into Ed's room. To disturb Ed, he turns on the loud music and wakes him up. Ed tries to catch the car, but he can't, so he makes his way to Peter's room instead. To his surprise, he finds Peter pretending to be asleep and confronts him for his action. Peter admits to sending the note and makes it clear that he's serious about his intentions and the war he declared to take his room back. The following day, Jennifer, Peter's little sister, approaches Ed and subtly reminds him about her upcoming birthday. At the same time, she looks into his belongings and notices a jar in the room filled with marbles. Curious, Jennifer inquires about it, and Ed explains that each marble represents a house he's built, reminding him of his life's achievements. The little girl then asks if she can have one of the marbles, and Ed agrees to her request. However, when Ed tries to open the jar, he realizes that Peter has glued it to the table. In the process of trying to free it, Ed accidentally breaks the glass jar, spilling the marbles on the ground. Adding to his dismay, he slips on the marbles and falls to the ground. Frustrated with the situation, Ed calls Peter to his room. They decide to establish some rules for their ongoing silent war. Similar to his military days, Ed writes some rules on a paper and makes Peter sign on it. They agree to certain terms like not involving other people, not damaging anyone else's belongings, and not telling their family about their ongoing conflict. Peter follows the rules and in response starts playing pranks on Ed. He replaces Ed's shaving cream with quick-drying foam, causing a comical situation when Ed can't remove it from his face. He also damages Ed's favorite record player, and when Ed tries to listen to music, the disc flies across the room. Going over his limits, Peter even mixes hot sauce into Ed's coffee, which is accidentally taken by Sally as she rushes to work. On her way, when she tastes it, she immediately spits it out and accidentally throws the coffee on a police officer. Because of this, the traffic officer gets enraged and gives her a ticket. Enraged, now it's Ed's turn to get back at Peter. In the class, as Peter is reading an essay aloud in front of the whole class, he doesn't realize that Ed has tampered with it and written embarrassing things until his friends laugh at him. This makes the teacher angry, and she asks our boy to meet with her after class, while the rest of the class teases him. While Peter is at school, Ed begins to unscrew all of Peter's furniture present in the attic. Following this, Ed also seeks advice from his friends, Danny and Jerry. As time goes by, Ed spends more time with his granddaughters and his son-in-law, learning how to use modern technology like self-checkouts and apps. Meanwhile, Sally comes home with groceries and discovers her daughter Mia with her boyfriend Russell. She makes it clear that she doesn't want Mia to be around that guy anymore, as she hates the guy. Seeing this, Ed advises Sally to handle her daughter the way he dealt with her boyfriend, who later became her husband Arthur. Later that day, when Peter returns home and places his bag on the computer table, the table collapses. He then sits on the chair, only to flip back and fall to the ground. Frustrated, when he sits on the bed, the bed's parts get scattered and he slips to the floor. After facing this humiliation, Peter decides to prank Ed by placing a snake on his bed. To do so and get a snake, he bribes his school friend and puts the snake under Ed's blanket, causing the grandpa to freak out when he wakes up. 
Unfortunately, the snake sneaks into Sally's car, and when she's driving to her office, it crawls on her neck, freaking her out. As a reflex action, she picks it up and throws it outside, only to land it on the police officer again and get another ticket. Peter also puts toothpaste on what he thinks are Ed's cookies, but his father ends up eating them. In retaliation, Ed learns to use a drone and finds out about Peter's online game castle. He then destroys the castle that Peter has been building for the last three years. Because of his excessive damage and other members getting affected due to their war, Peter and Ed call a meeting and decide to compete in an event and end their rivalry once and for all. They finally decide to compete in dodgeball. Next, Ed invites Jerry, Danny, and some other friends to play dodgeball against Peter and his friends. Soon, the first round goes to Peter's team, but Ed's team wins the second round. However, during the third round, Danny injures his jaw, and Peter and Ed compete, only to end it in a tie. In the next scene, Ed picks up Peter from school, hoping to reconcile and spend some quality time together fishing. However, after they catch some fish, they discover that fishing is not allowed in the area they chose and are chased by the ranger. Following this, Ed takes Peter to his old house and shares some of the hidden secrets left behind on the walls. He reveals to his grandson that he had spent a lot of time designing and building his own house. After spending the whole day together, it seems like they've patched things up. But when they reach home, Peter plays another prank on Ed, damaging his room's door. In reply, Ed also puts a bursting pickle jar inside Peter's school bag. But at school, instead of Peter, a bully opens his bag and gets squirted by the pickle all over his face. One day, while preparing for Jennifer's birthday party, Ed learns that Peter is being bullied at school. Next, the grandpa, along with his friends Danny and Jerry, takes action by confronting the bully and tossing him into a dumpster. The scene then fast forwards to Jenny's Christmas-themed birthday party where Peter tries his best to keep his promise of not pulling any pranks. However, he sets up a funny ejector seat for Ed, who was supposed to be the Santa Claus for the party. To his dismay, a last-minute switch has Jerry filling in as Santa. Throughout the event, instead of helping out, Peter and Ed continue their pranks, like spraying bottles at each other, and Peter pulling the plug to the lights while Ed is checking them, which results in the latter getting a shock. Their mischief accidentally reveals their ongoing war to everyone at the party. This leads to more chaos as Jerry is ejected from his chair, causing further damage and injuring some guests. The Christmas tree is also ruined, alongside Arthur's grill and Jennifer's birthday cake. All the commotion leads to a big tree falling onto Peter. Fortunately, in time, Ed pushes his grandson from the way and he himself gets injured. Ed is then taken to the hospital, and as a consequence of the chaos, Arthur and Sally impose a home arrest on Peter for six months as a form of punishment. At the hospital, while the whole family is waiting for Ed, Russell shows up and Sally chases him away. She initially appears angry, but to his surprise, invites him home. After this, the family goes to pick Ed up from the hospital, but discovers that he's already left with his Lyft driver, Chuck, heading back to his old house. Jennifer and the others blame Peter for chasing Grandpa away from the house. Feeling remorseful, Peter decides to make amends and visits Ed to plead with him to move back in with the family. He admits it's his mistake and also tells Ed that he's ready to sacrifice his room for his grandpa. They eventually reconcile with Sally as a witness. In the last scene, Ed and Peter seem to finally be getting along and living together in the same house. When Peter requests to go fishing, Ed declines and leaves to be with Diane, his new romantic partner. The movie then ends with Peter getting quite angry at his grandpa and declaring another Cold War as Ed gets in a car with Diane.